Welcome to Analysis and Chains with Nathan and Neil. <laughs> Greetings, one and everyone. Nathan here, along with Neil. We're looking today at the Bitcoin crash that leads to the Bitcoin cash. How's it going, today, well, Neil? Nathan? I didn't sleep much over the weekend. I uh, was too excited about what was happening with Bitcoin cash. I think uh, I was checking <laughs> updates at 2 a.m. in the morning on uh, Sunday morning. So uh, that's how awesome it was. <laughs> it's amazing. So uh, if you haven't found out about it yet, there's been some big uh, big news, big moving and shaking in, uh, in yeah, the Bitcoin like world, hasn't Last there? time we had our show, it was just after the, the announcement that Sega 2X was going to be cancelled. So naturally, we all sat back and thought, okay, that's it. You know, uh, Bitcoin is going to become a more solid community and we're going to see it take off and go to the moon. And uh, I proclaimed that 2018 was going to be the year of the Bitcoin. But then we saw a big shift happen. We, we started to see a lot of miners shift from Bitcoin to Bitcoin Cash because it's more profitable. And they aligned more with the ideals of Bitcoin Cash in terms of scalability. And from there, we just saw this huge market movement where Bitcoin Cash was increasing while Bitcoin itself was decreasing. And it escalated very, very quickly. I think uh, around about 2 a.m., uh, Eastern Standard Time over here in North America was when it peaked at over a bit Bitcoin Cash peaked around by two thousand five hundred, I believe, and it was only maybe a thousand twenty four hours beforehand. So it really was super super intense. Some people were reacting like it was end of the world for Bitcoin, but uh, things have now calmed down uh, back to a uh, pre pre FOMO price. Uh, which is around by 1,300 for Bitcoin Cash. And I believe Bitcoin's gone back up to 6,600 after dropping to 5,800. So very, very exciting weekend. Uh, brings up a lot more politics in the world of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. But uh, I think the next uh, few weeks are going to be very exciting. Oh, abs- absolutely. It really does just go to show you just how speculative this all <laughs> yeah. is. Because you know, it's not like Bitcoin Cash gained, you know, double uh, double its value or ten times its value uh, overnight, but it certainly gained the confidence, ten times its confidence value from the uh, the local investment community. Yeah, and it, a lot comes down to Sega Two X. There's a lot of anticipation in, in regards to the hard fork. People saw it as free money, and um, I think people. Well, we're investing based on that. And that's potentially why Bitcoin was climbing so much in recent months. And because it was climbing so much, more people were piling in. People who never invest in cryptocurrency uh, and just sell up a Coinbase account were just piling into Bitcoin. But it seems that a lot of people in the know or a lot of the people on the inside of cryptocurrencies, and again, this goes back to what we're saying on, on Friday, is that a lot of, you know, a few people make the big decisions. And obviously, some people started to feel that because of Segwit 2x cancellation, there was no way forward for many miners, and uh, they made this big sh- shift over. So, in terms of the valuation, just going back to your point, why it climbed up so high is I, usually when that happens, and we see in the stock market, is because of anticipation of the future, that this move of miners um, uh, could see potentially Bitcoin Cash gain over time. You know, it may not shoot up to 6,000 in a week, but it could start a tear over the period of the next few months. So I think that was why it spiked up so much and people overreacted naturally. But I think that we could see more adoption of Bitcoin Cash. And one of the reasons why is many merchants have actually come out in support of Bitcoin Cash. So the type of merchants that are out there are people who do a lot of their business just in Bitcoin and they were badly impacted by the fees and the transaction time. So imagine if you were always selling something for 100, say, uh, dollars um, in, and uh, you're using Bitcoin for transactions. Well, over time, the transaction fee was increasing um, to, to a point that it just be, was becoming less feasible for your business model. So there was a lot of uh, merchants proclaiming that they were going to switch to Bit- Bitcoin Cash from now on, and, uh, for from now on, and I guess with that, 
many people start to see a good reason to invest for Bitcoin Cash for the future. One of the things that I find really interesting about this is the whole nature of a decentralized currency, right? When Bitcoin started out, it was sort of the idea of, well, we have this decentralized currency. It's not controlled by a central authority, uh, not necessarily uh, in any person's control. And so it allows us to sidestep a lot of the barriers that traditional currencies have, you know, like sending money overseas, sending money direct person to person, holding value without having to trust someone. But when you scale that up and you end up having larger and larger groups uh, holding uh, Bitcoin and, uh, and making decisions collectively when they're not used to making collective decisions, well, uh, you end up getting this herd mentality thing going, right? So just how quickly the favor can shift from Bitcoins going through the moon to uh, a couple of people making a decision to all of the miners or some of the miners moving over to Bitcoin Cash because it ends up being more profitable for them. Well, it's uh, it, it's interesting just how fast that can move. And that's something that people tend not to take into account when they're doing their uh, their forward thinking and their, their planning and uh, where to put their investment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really all down to the fact that a decentralized world, uh, while it has a, a great ideology, um, is very hard to enact. And going back to your herd mentality, it it is natural that people become tribal. It's very hard to make everyone non-tribal. It's human nature. And when you look at miners and how they pull together, they pull the resources. Well, look, you know, in an ideal world, every single miner will be their own entity and be 100% decentralized. But again, there is a herd mentality. Some people think, well, if I go in with another miner, and if he gets the new mine Bitcoin and I don't and we share it, well, then it's more profitable that way. And so to to, to have this perfect sense of de- decentralization, excuse me, perfect sense of decentralization is very, very difficult. And um, and and the thing is, you know, we're, in, uh, we're, we're playing with free market dynamics. There are no regulation. It really is a complete free for all system. And naturally, as you're going back to your point, you know, human emotions will take over. People will become tribal. People will, you know, adopt a herd mentality because when you're in a very decentralized system, it's very, very lonely. You're very, very exposed. You you need to um, mitigate risks. And so I think the idealism of Bitcoin is very hard to hold up while it grows. The scalability is going to be very, very difficult. And remember, this is a new economic concept decentralization. I think over time there will be better strategies out there to help it evolve, but you know, only time will help us with that. We need to experiment, we need to fail, we need to try. And so what we're seeing is that in action. We're now seeing two methodologies as to or two ide- ideologies on how to implement decentralization. And you know, we're just going to let the market decide. I there's a lot of paranoia, a lot of conspiracy theories going around and a lot of mud flinging at each other side. But, you know, as a analyst and person observing this, it's it's quite incredible and it's a great learning opportunity. I think that if we were to reset the world all over again, because people complain about too, too few people own too much wealth in the world, well, you know, I think Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is showing exactly what would happen if we were to reset the world and make it as fair as possible because, you know, human tendencies take over and uh, and that's what we're seeing in the crypto market. It's interesting that you bring up the incentives because incentives are sort of the backbone as to why Bitcoin worked in the first place, right? You have uh, the miners who are incentive to, uh, incentivized to mine and to keep up the uh, the network and uh, log the transactions you have the people using the bitcoin who have their incentives to uh, use the official network and to uh, to use their bitcoins and uh, it, and really it's the whole pr- the whole proof of work system is based on who is incentivized to do what and the one thing it doesn't 
take into account is what happens if there's a competing network and people are incentivized to go use that instead. And this is this is the the deal with crypto is that there are all sorts of consequences that we can't really foresee because we haven't been down this road before. And you know, we can, you know, maybe make an educated guess, well what happens if we have a, a different uh, fork of the bitcoin or too many forks in the bitcoin or uh, uh but but really it can be anyone's guess and and if whether bitcoin cash ends up being the crypto of choice for uh, for the community at large in the long run still remains to be seen i mean everyone's excited about it but for all we know everyone can jump over to bitcoin gold <laughs> next week yeah well i guess this is one of the the issues probably not spoken about is the incentives is that when you have incentives there will always be a risk to a risk to decentralization because people need to pool and if they end up pooling well they then each pool becomes a centralized entity and there is no easy way around it like even if we look at proof of stake um that the person who stakes the most will naturally get the most. And so that it's going to be very, very difficult to really implement these ideal cryptocurrencies in the future. And I think what we're seeing with the market is it's trying to help us figure out what type of format or principle is the best way forward. Like what's, what can we sacrifice? What is worth sacrificing? Like when we think of Dash and how it has a, a central make a central system to help with decision making, for example. Like, is that the right methodology? And we saw Dash spike over the weekend as well because that, like Bitcoin Cash, is quite quick when it comes to is quite quick when it comes to transactions. And so we're having the mar- we're having people to figure out. Okay, is is speed really really important? And if the speed is very very important, to what extent are you willing to compromise decentralization? And I think, I think that that's what we're going to be seeing over time. We're going to see three main. Ideally, there'd be two main camps, but there's now three main camps. We have, we're going to have a camp for crypto to act like cash. In other words, they have low fees and are quite timely in their confirmation time. And so this is what ideally we'll be using in the future if we're going to buy a coffee. And that's why we have the coffee, uh, the big coffee index. Because ideally, when I buy coffee for one dollar fifty, you know, hopefully I'm not paying six dollars fifty in total because I'm paying a five dollar transaction fee. And then we have this other camp, which is like the operating system camp. That's where you have your Ethereum, Ethereum, you've Neo, you've Cardano. All of these have smart contracts, and so they're kind of priced differently. And then you have this third camp, which is this Bitcoin camp, and it's hard to know what it really is uh, because is it trying to be a store of value? Is it trying to be its other asset class? It, it's very hard to know. Um, but when we look at the sort of cash camp, they're all com- really competing amongst themselves. Because it's very, even though Bitcoin Cash has the same name as Bitcoin and came from Bitcoin originally, in a way, it's kind of targeting a different market. It's trying to be more like cash and it's really competing against the likes of Dash and, uh, and Ethereum Classic, for example. And then Ethereum is really competing against Neo and Cardano. So we shouldn't really be comparing different camps. And I think that's that's they're, they're the real strategic battles that are happening. Uh, but then when it comes to Bitcoin, it's really hard to know if it really is competing against Bitcoin Cash. And if Bitcoin decreases in value, why Bitcoin Cash is increasing in value, that to me would suggest that, that the merchants or people who are using it for business are less inclined to use it. But then this whole ideology that people are trying to support where it's like a store of value. Um, you know, I guess they'd be the ones who would still be buying into Bitcoin. Yeah. I think with a lot of crypto, the main reason that we are hearing about it so often that, that there is so much news is because of this third camp, this, uh, it's not quite a security, but we're totally treating it as a security. Uh, camp. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, it's not an investment, but tell me how to invest, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's hard not to get excited when 
you invest a thousand dollars and then it becomes ten thousand dollars within the span of a week or a hundred thousand and and you're looking and you're going wow how did this happen and um and as the crypto market matures that has to end i mean there's no way that's going to continue i'm sure we're seeing a once in a lifetime event with the rise of bitcoin and then all of the altcoins and the icos because uh because as wild west and as exciting as it is uh there's as much blood on the floor as there are millionaires driving their porsches and and <laughs> uh regular regulatory wise that's got to come to an end but also just for practical utility wise that's got to come to an end like the the need of a cash system like a, di- a digital distributed cash system is very different than the needs of uh, of an investment vehicle uh, i mean you need it stable basically you know you don't want to be paying you know if you're paying one bitcoin today for uh, for an item it's like okay well it's you know 5000 today 10000 tomorrow it's like the, it's hard to gauge your prices and your costs that way i mean you can't run a stable business so yeah exactly so, uh, exactly i think i that's think that's just the road we're going point. down is that uh, the the excitement may or may not wear off as uh, as these crypto markets mature but definitely uh, definitely the i suppose the the words i'm looking for is that the the reason that everyone's excited about this now is not the reason people are going to be excited about it tomorrow true very 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 true i think the path of cryptocurrency is to get to a world where it's less volatile and in order in order for to get to a world less volatile adoption has to reduce and adoption will be reducing because it's already being adopted by a lot of people and so but i think that world is maybe 15 years away and because because of that uh, by the time that time comes around, there'll be very few players left. And effectively, you know, we're all just trying to pick a winners now. We're all just, ga- I mean, in, to a certain extent, to a certain extent, we're all gambling uh, because no one can see into the future. But we're all trying to speculate at the best we can to figure out, okay, what will be those, say, four or five cryptocurrencies that will be in the, the cash camp? What will be those four or five cryptocurrencies that will be in the, operating system cap and i and the thing is between now and 10 15 years the volatility i think it will will remain there and unfortunately there's nothing we can do i think the idea behind those financial investment vehicles like the etfs that people keep talking about they're hoping that that will reduce volatility in the likes of bitcoin but truthfully i think it's it's going to continue to be there until these cryptocurrencies mature and while they're maturing we're going to see more regulation i think people don't people feel like uh, regulation should stay away from cryptocurrencies but in a world where um uh, there's not much opportunity in stock markets or bonds um i think a lot of institutional investors are going to be looking at cryptocurrency as a way to you know, reduce or increase returns, and if if that's the case, well then regulation needs to creep needs to creep in. I remember when I was watching banking on Bitcoin, you see um you see the 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 Winklevoss uh, brothers um were the ones trying to push for regulation on exchanges, and so that really upset a lot of people because they felt that cryptocurrencies and particularly Bitcoin shouldn't have any form of regulation, but they're kind of ahead of their time because they knew that the sooner that they were regulated themselves or or um, officially recognized, the sooner institutional investors re- would use them. So there will come a point where people will start to realize having regulation on your side is a competitive advantage and would actually increase adoption. I'm sure. So I feel that that will eventually come as well. But I think we really are talking 10, 15 years away. And so... That's why these days are more exciting because, you know, there's a lot more battles. It's the wild, wild west. And uh, yeah, 10, 15 years time, it could be very, very boring, just like the, the currency markets of today. It's, it's kind of funny. I mean, regulation is a dirty word in a lot of people's minds. 
Um, <laughs> and, and with good reason, you know, regulation can end up uh, crippling uh, exciting new markets. Um, and at the same time, you know, with this whole Bitcoin cash debacle, who's to say that it wasn't a pump and dump scheme? Who's to say that uh, that the decision uh, made by uh, made to um, uh, forego the Segwit two X fork wasn't made by someone who just promptly sold a lot of Bitcoin right beforehand? We don't know. How can we know? And I mean, I'm sure. Well, I'm probably not, but. I mean, there's no way that we have of knowing because there's no regulation. So this is sort of the interesting thing is that there are actually insiders at this point and there's a lot of value at stake. I mean, we're talking, what, a hundred billion market, which is, you know, the size of a small hedge fund and 90% of the value in that hundred billion market is crypto, uh, sorry, is, uh, is Bitcoin. So, and then in the number two and three slots, you know, you've got 10% of the value. The ICO market is like is, is a sliver of that. Like almost all the value in the crypto market is Bitcoin. So, yeah, the, uh, people uh, people stepping up to manipulate the market in any way they can. I would say the incentives are definitely there for that, whether or not it's actually happening. Exactly, exactly, and and that's the 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 crypto game. It is the wild wild west. It's you 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 cannot say. I am a big supporter of Bitcoin and then complain about market manipulation because you're in the you're a part of a game that's about no regulation. And there's no regulation, well then anyone can manipulate the market. There's no one to wag the finger at you and say, you know, you did something bad and you have to pay a fee. And I, I and just going back to what you said about, you know, Bitcoin Cash potentially being a, a, a pump and dump. Over the weekend, and uh, is that there have been rumors going around various forum, uh, around various forums and Reddit and wherever that that wasn't the, that was the case. Someone actually posted, I think, back in June or July. I saw the screenshot. Now I don't know how truthful this screen this screenshot is, and if it really did happen or whatever. But apparently, um, there was never supposed to be a Segwit two X. It was going to be cancelled, and they were going to jump on the Bitcoin Cash train and all this type of stuff, and people are saying that's market manipulation and what have you but look at the end of the day this is the wild wild west and if they do that um you know people will eventually you know bet on what's working the way they want it to work if they do this whole big you know market manipulation well look if the if the currency is slow and if it's very very expensive um well then people won't adopt it people won't use it you know if they've you know, marketed one thing and providing another, then the market will decide, you know what, this is not what we're investing in. Then they will just dump Bitcoin cash. So with all the talk of, of conspiracy theories and market manipulation, to me, ultimately, the bigger market will decide if if uh, if this is a, a scam or not. And, um, you know, so when I see the, all these Bitcoin supporters cry on Twitter, I'm like, hey, dude, you know what? This is what you signed up for. And uh, you don't get to, to call it market manipulation when you don't want any hmm. regulation. So prediction time, Neil. Will Bitcoin Cash be the newest yeah. Bitcoin? Oh, I'll be honest with you. I want to say yes, just for a bit of excitement. <laughs> um, I am... Um, I, a part of me thinks that this is a, a good possibility in 2018, mainly because of two big factors. One being that if merchants or businesses who who are dependent on Bitcoin switch to Bitcoin Cash because it makes more sense to them based on fees and transaction time, we could see a huge change in volume used in Bitcoin Cash, and we could see a big drop in volume for um, for Bitcoin. And if we're also seeing a lot of miners leave Bitcoin, well, that could really freeze up the network. And we saw that over the weekend. I I tried to buy Bitcoin in Coinbase and tried to move it to Bittrex, and it took I think it took like over an hour for that to happen. And you know, no one can. No one can, in the right mind, use Bitcoin as a business if that's the way it's going to, going to be going to behave. And so, 
we're seeing the few like I think that that aspect and the net, and the miners leaving because Bitcoin Cash is supposed to be more profitable and today is a a, a hard fork for Bitcoin Cash where the um the difficulty I think is supposed to be reduced and therefore be more profitable for miners. So if we see this huge shift, merchants and miners going to Bitcoin Cash, I I struggle to see why not why Bitcoin Cash could not eventually overtake Bitcoin and. Uh, and then we will we will we will really see how strong the huddle culture is in Bitcoin because this is what we talked about in the past the Bitcoin huddle culture which is you buy you hold and you see it through no matter what you know that that seems to be really driving Bitcoin this is the main driving force behind its strength and its growth and we will see then you know really how many like how many of these people are are keeping the price up, and maybe it's maybe it's an illusion. <laughs> we'll we'll see. But a part of me really does feel that come mid two thousand eighteen, there is a good chance that Bitcoin Cash could overtake Bitcoin, provided a lot of merchants and a lot of miners mm-hmm. switch. Over. No, you may have a very good point. Uh, I suppose the one thing that I would look at is would Bitcoin Cash be vulnerable to the same types of pressures and forking that Bitcoin is? Uh, They do have Bitcoin in their name, so they still have part of the branding value. Um, But if people really are looking for something that's uh, solving a lot of these problems, I could imagine them moving over to obviously the best coin out there, Whopper coin, um, (laughs) new Bitcoin, or, or even better, nutshells. It could happen. I, but I think you just made an excellent point there, Nathan, is that it, it's kind of like the, the TV show Game of Thrones. Every time there's a new king, the, the, it, there will be risks for it to fall apart. And this could be a reoccurring problem with, with being the king, with being top uh, or being, being the main cryptocurrency. So... I think that's a very interesting hypothesis. And if Bitcoin Cash does overtake Bitcoin, I will be very, very excited to see how the community will hold itself together. Will they start to to fracture? Will it be more than about low transaction fees and transaction time? I, at the moment, the transaction time is not that quick, but it's definitely quicker than an hour that it took for me over the weekend. But you know, could we see new ideologies form once Bitcoin Cash becomes the king of, of crypto? And I think that to me will be extremely exciting. So um yeah, this these are really exciting times just when we thought that we'll just sit back and cruise through 2018 and everything looks set in stone. It really does look like 2018 is gonna be the year of the Bitcoin, as I said, but it's going to be Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash. And uh, listeners, wh- what do you think? Did we get this right? Are we completely off base? You can tell us by <laughs> you can tell us by joining up to our Slack group on www.analysisinchains.com. Just uh, sign up for the Slack, and uh, we'll send you some nutshells for joining. Uh, we have a good group on there that we talk about these things all week long, and. Yeah. And uh, one other thing is I am aware that we've put off our wave segment for a couple of weeks just because there's been crazy news happening. We will get to that. We thank you to our listeners who've been waiting for the results of our uh, investigation into waves. And uh, yeah, I've been in Malta the past week. I managed to interview some Maltese blockchain startups and we got that coming up for you in the coming weeks as well. So it's it is definitely exciting times with a lot to report in the crypto Cryptoverse. I like that word, cryptoverse. Anything else, Neil, before we sign off? Not really. I'm just going to go check the Bitcoin Cash hard fork to make sure it happens successfully. And the cryptoverse. May the huddles be ever in your favor. That's our show. Thanks for tuning in to Analysis and Chains with Nathan and Neil. Check us out at analysisandchains.com on iTunes, Podbean, and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Until next time, keep hashing.